Good morning and welcome to today's webcast, e-commerce companies leverage analytic process automation. Before we begin, I'm going to play a brief housekeeping video. Welcome and thank you for viewing our webcast series. Before we begin, please keep the following in mind. You can customize how you view our presentation and interact with the presenter. For better viewing, close all other applications and turn up your speaker volume. You can adjust window size and placement or enter full screen mode using the controls of the top right of the window or dragging the bottom right hand corner to resize. At the bottom of your screen, you'll see a series of icons that relate to a different aspect of our session. You can download a PDF of today's slides from the slide deck and handouts widget. You can ask questions by typing in the Q&A window and clicking submit. We'll do our best to answer all questions or follow up via email. If you experience technical difficulty, refresh your browser by hitting the F5 key. This presentation is not legal, investment, or accounting advice. We encourage you to seek the counsel of a professional service provider to apply this content to your specific circumstances. And I'm pleased to introduce today's presenters from Moss Adams, Lauren Denherter, Managing Director, and Alyssa Galvin, Automation Lead Consultant. Lauren is a firm leader of business intelligence and corporate performance management. He helps businesses improve their processes to become more efficient and make better decisions. Alyssa has extensive experience evaluating and enhancing processes for automation suitability, leading automation implementations, and serving as a project manager while tailoring processes to best align with client needs. And with that, Lauren, I'll turn it over to you to get us started. Thank you so much, Emily. And thank you everybody for joining as we talk about um, analytic process automation and e-commerce. So I know that is a fairly technical title. Uh, what we wanna do here is talk about what it means, but more importantly, the business value that it brings and why it's important to consider. What we um, see across our e-commerce clients is there are typically a number of different systems that are used um, in the business, yes, from e-commerce to e-commerce platforms to um, financial systems and operational systems. And uh, while they're often, you know, somewhat integrated, they're not always that tightly integrated for getting all the insights that you need. And so there tends to be these processes where you're pulling data from one or more of the systems and preparing it to get insights to um, how things are progressing and how it's going in the business. And um, that's what we really want to talk about today is like, how do you make that um, more efficient and automate it? And what's the business value of doing that? So as we talk through that, we'll be talking through like, what are the barriers to just getting to value in the first place? And then we'll talk about uh, what this automated process automation, you know, APA is really all about. We'll have an example that we can share with you. And then we'll also talk about um, how do you remove barriers to getting value from this um, for your own business. So before we start here, what we wanna do is just do a quick poll and um, make sure we understand the perspective of our audience here. So, and just thinking about that middle ground of where for you, get your data and you massage it, you process it and clean it up, you know, all those different things you do as you're getting it ready to have insights. And what we'd like to know here is, where do your teams spend most of their time? Is it around capturing data from different source systems or is it more in that whole kind of middle part of you, so you have data you know, on hand um, but there's cleanup that has to be done, you have to align it uh, when you get things like, you know, multiple time frames, aligning can get quite interesting. And then often there are some updates that need to be applied as well so that you are getting to a point where these um, calculations are done and you have something that you can pull together into a presentation and get it out there. Um, and sometimes it's all the above. But we kind of see fairly regularly as a, you know, of course, a combination of these, but a um, 
you know, a bit of time is spent there in kind of that middle part of calculations. I know, Alyssa, you, you see a bit of this. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. I would say, yeah, to your point, you know, kind of in all of these areas, but um, definitely around that manual preparation too um, is a good, good chunk of time spent there. Yeah, very good. And so here, yeah, so sure enough, this kind of what this matches what we see a lot is uh, that middle piece there where it does take, you know, quite a bit of time to get that done. Um, the, the top one's a little higher than I'd expect. It's like just getting the data, um, you know, more and more systems are allowing you to download data. Uh, although it, I have to say that it can be a time consuming thing as well. <laughs> it might be a road exercise, but it takes time. So yeah, very good. So with that, what we want to talk about here is, you know, what are some of the challenges that we see? And this, you know, somewhat aligns with what we just saw in the poll there, where it, it tends to fall into these kind of three broad categories. You know, the challenges of just getting data pulled together so that you have a basis for your insights. With the first there being, it's just time consuming. It just simply takes a lot of effort. And this effort is just repeated, you know, period after period, whether it's month after month or quarter after quarter. And when there's multiple different um, data sources, what that means is each system tends to represent its own data in a little different way. And then aligning that and having cross-referencing that between systems is can take a significant amount of time. Um, in e-commerce, we typically see fairly large data volumes. And while the actual equation of, you might say, of you know the equation of making it uh, fit together may not be that complex, when you get into volume, then that drives complexity up quite a bit. And some of that complexity comes from the need to kind of clean up the data uh, before it ever gets there, um, gets to the point where you can join it together. So, you know, that that's one part of it. Timeliness is another. Um, as it goes with, you know, information, it does have a shelf life, meaning it's, you know, while it's still interesting in the past, you don't have the same levers to pull if it's in the past. If it's much more recent, then it's something that you can make a decision and do something about in the moment. So timeliness really matters. You'll hear us talk about this kind of quite a bit as we move through this, like how do you really get business value from your data? And then the quality of the data, you know, while it is, you know, important so you're putting quality numbers out there, what really is behind all of that is just having confidence in the numbers. When you have confidence in numbers, it just speeds up the decision-making cycle because people know they have confidence in what they're looking at, what's really happening. If there's a question around that, it really slows things down and drives a lot of extra steps to qualify um, what the numbers are saying rather than acting on what the numbers are saying. This is another representation that we'd like to talk about in terms of you know, process automation. And this is starting to get a view into the business value. So on the left-hand side there, you'll see that towards the bottom, it says, you know, this is the tactical things that have to happen. And then as you work up the chain, the value chain there, it gets to strategic things that can happen. And that's really where the decision-making is happening. So this process automation, so this whole thing about taking what you're doing with, let's say, in spreadsheets and whatnot, and taking that exercise and automating it so it can be run um, very quickly would be kind of the bottom um, kind of two thirds of that triangle. So like 80% of, you know, just capturing the data and preparing it and getting it ready for business insights. And the value here is to say, where would we like to be? And that is automate the process of capture and preparation so that you have much more time to work with what the results are and make decisions around that. Um, what this is not really showing that we'll see later on is not only is it that you have more time for it, but you can do many faster iterations of this and see things in a much more timely way. 
Yeah, so I think, um, Lisa, you have some good insight to us, you know, with an example of what this uh, analytic process automation is all about. Yeah, thanks, Lauren. So just going back to that point of, you know, where do we see analytic process automation kind of really driving that value and overall kind of just what is it and what is it, what is its purpose? So really, at the end of the day, APA is really just about, you know, getting your data into a usable format so that you can then start, you know, gathering those insights and really get that value from your data. So again, to Lauren's point, you know, where we see it being really beneficial is automating those tasks that, you know, people are currently spending, you know, a lot of time doing that manual data prep within spreadsheets, whether that's creating different models, um, different analysis, just again, heavy load on that that manual prep. Um, another great example of where we see it kind of really being useful is again, when you're working with multiple source systems that aren't, you know, tightly integrated with each other. If you ever have a situation, you know, where you have data going into a spreadsheet in between those two systems, um, and you know you're having to collect and combine that data together um, for reconciliation purposes, um, APA has been a great tool um, in terms of, you know, automating that process and allowing your team, you know, a lot of that time back. But really just overall, you know, getting that data into a state that your team can start making decisions off of in a more efficient manner. So we're going to dive into an example using an APA tool called Alterix. Um, I did want to highlight, you know, that this is just one APA tool and there are multiple out there that can be used, um, but really want to kind of just go through an example to give you all an idea of what this looks like end to end. So today we're going to look at an example of automating an analysis around customer acquisition. So through this example, we'll see how you're able to to automate that capture of different data sources, um, automate all of that data preparation piece, and then produce output reports for your review. So I will go through kind of an example of an automated workflow using Alteric. So this is a blueprint of what this workflow would look like. And kind of just the first thing I want to highlight here is with a tool like Alteric or other APA tools, um, this is a low code platform. So what that means is, you know, this is a tool that is intended to be used and maintained by the business user. It does not require your IT team to configure these workflows um, and maintain them. So it's a really user friendly platform where you're able to really just drag and drop different tool sets that are available in the platform to build out your workflow. So we'll kind of talk about what that looks like here. So we always like to start with, you know, what are those different data sources? And the great thing about these tools is there is no limit to the amount of data sources that you can pull into an automated workflow. And you can pull in different types of data sources as well. So if that's a CSV file or a text file, or maybe you even want to make a direct database connection, if it's available, you can pull in all of those different sources. So you can see in this example, you know, we have six different data sources that contain all of that data that we need to complete this analysis. So once we have that piece built out, you're then able to continue to use those tool sets that are available um, to then, you know, build out that data cleanup portion. And this is also where you start applying, you know, all of that business logic that you need specific to your analysis. So you're able to configure these tools to your organization's needs, um, whether that's, you know, applying specific formulas, or you know that there's an existing process exception that needs to be flagged, you're able to build in all of that logic um, into these workflows. And another great thing just in terms of, you know, being a user-friendly platform is as you're configuring these tools, you also have the ability to preview that data within the tool set so that you can see, you know, how those changes you are making are 
impacting that data so that you can make those updates in real time if needed. So once you get that portion configured, you're then able to set up your output reports, which I'll talk about in a little bit more detail on the next slide. But kind of just highlighting, um, you know, some more features of these types of tool sets and kind of really where we see the benefits are, you know, around the processing time. So a really robust platform, um, a workflow this size and one 10 times its size will only take minutes to process end to end, which really makes it um, great in terms of when you have to run through updates. Um, so let's say, you know, you did your initial review and you determined, oh, I need to make some updates to some things. You're able to have those updates reflected in your output reports within minutes. Uh, another question that that we get often is around, you know, well, how do I know what these automation tools are doing? What is my level of visibility into these tool sets? And that's a very valid question. Uh, the great thing about Alteryx and other APA tools is, you know, they're not a black box. You have full visibility into what is going on within the tool set um, through logging and documentation. And we'll kind of talk about that a little bit more as we jump into the next slide around the output reporting. So another great feature of these types of tools is really being able to customize that output reporting to your organization's needs. You get to determine how you want that data presented, what information you want to see. Um, you get to determine you know, the file output, or maybe you wanna push it into a data visualization tool like Power BI or Tableau. Um, this is also where you can, you know, really build out that reporting around those process exceptions or anything that you wanted to flag for more detail. So not only are we seeing, you know, efficiencies gained around that data preparation piece, but we're also seeing efficiencies gained around that review process as well, because it's really giving you a full picture of everything that you need to complete that review. And then going back to more of the visibility um, question that we kind of spoke to earlier. Oh, uh, another question kind of related to that is, you know, how does this work in terms of auditability? Uh, another great question. And again, you know, through these tools, you're able to see exactly what is happening within the process, provide documentation around that. Another feature that we see being used often is, you know, utilizing that PDF output so that you can, you know, print out those output reports and go through your signing and approvals process. Um, additionally, you have the ability to version control um, these workflows. So again, just really giving you the information that you need and the features that you need to really make this, um, you know, an auditable process as well. So speaking a little bit just to the overall impact and again, the value that we see kind of in implementing these types of tools around your processes is of course, you know, reducing the manual time spent, really gaining those process efficiencies around, you know, the preparation as well as the review process. One that's a little bit more of a hidden value is around the frequency. And Lauren kind of alluded to this earlier in terms of, you know, once you have these processes automated, you're able to run them more frequently. So so one area that we've seen a lot of value is going back to that reconciliation example. A lot of times we see people waiting till, you know, month end to complete their reconciliation processes just because of how much time it takes to complete that process. Once it's automated, you can actually run those processes daily and then you're really able to address any issues that may have arisen from those daily reconciliations in real time and then really just get that time back at month in because at that point you would have kind of addressed things as they were occurring and don't have to spend time going back and digging into, you know, weeks ago to kind of determine where any variances happened. Um, and then again, just to the quality and compliance, uh, really increasing that data quality um, and then again, getting that detailed process documentation by putting these um, processes within these APA tools, you're really documenting exactly what your process is. Um, and, you know, that is just beneficial in terms of education for your team members and even training. So just a lot of 
kind of great value in terms of implementing a tool set like this. So now I will pass it back to Lauren to speak a bit more to the value and ROI. Yeah, thank you, Alyssa. And that last point you made, I think it's just really important. Um, many times there are specific people in an organization that really fill key roles of pulling data together, getting the insights, doing reconciliations, and it's kind of necessarily focused on one person, but there's this business risk in that. And um, if nothing else, just going on vacation <laughs> and then it's, you know, that process doesn't happen. So these tools are a way to, as you pointed out, to document that and to allow other people to run them as well. And just, you know, take some of the business risk out of that. What I wanted to do here is now kind of get um, take those details and say, well, how does it apply to kind of the overall organization? And we like to start here where, you know, high performing organizations, they tend to have a plan. They of course are watching their performance and comparing those two together and making that available to the appropriate people at the appropriate time and then building all this communication around that. The lubricant that makes that all happen is data. And that's that triangle in the middle where you see kind of tying it all together. And the timing of that is critically important because being able to see how things are going in near real time and having confidence in those numbers is what gives you the ability to make um, decisions, business decisions with real confidence. And that is really what's behind driving a high performance organization. And again, to one of um, Alyssa's earlier points, it's when you can run the same process more frequently just because it's automated, what it means is it just increases the, um, the timeliness of the information and the ability to make a decision when it really does matter. So again, you know, information does have a shelf life. Just another view into that here where, you know, Getting information out has this whole aspect of collecting, distributing, and then effective presentations. And you know, this is what your executives really need, is they need to have an organization where um, this is all running smoothly and there's a lot of confidence in what those numbers are. And so this process automation um, really does a lot of addressing around these first two boxes to prepare for that effective presentation. But it's the ability to collect information and get it ready on a very quick and a very regular basis and to be able to distribute that in a timely way so that it is valuable to the business in terms of making you know, real-time operational decisions. And you know, that is what allows you to get to a point where you get an ROI from the tool and just to speak a little bit about that um, ROI equation here. So on the cost side of this, there are of course, you know, licenses and, you know, any IT infrastructure, but um, to that end, that we're finding that a lot of these modern tools that are now available are really reducing the IT infrastructure and the IT involvement. So if you're just taking the labor out of it. So Alyssa uh, talked about this earlier where these platforms now are becoming what's called a low code. So it's drag and drop and stitching things together. And these tool sets are really powerful in allowing the business user to do that. There's kind of two aspects to them. One is just the, it, it takes kind of a layer of labor off of it. So that brings the cost down, but at the same time, allowing a business to experiment with their data um, rather than being a kind of a high um, cost or high stakes um, depth test cycle with the development cycle, there's, there's a huge difference there being able to experiment with your data and see what you can do. But so on the cost side of this, it's about usually about the license and most of the cost is really just in that. These are quite cost effective. But then there's of course the benefit side of the ROI as well. And that's where speed and accuracy to support decision-making is so important. And maybe just a quick story here will help illustrate that. So 
if you're going through your whole process in a series of spreadsheets and you get to the end of the month and then you get the um, your actuals together, you mix it with your plan, you distribute it out to your people. If you like really on top of it within a few days or a week, it's out there. At that point, that month is done and you can't do anything about it and you're already significantly into the next month and with starting to limit the amount of time you have to make something go different if that's what's needed um, or do more of the same if it's on a really positive side. Now, if I just retell that story again with some process automation and you're running that every day and you're getting insights out there and people see that and they see a trajectory or they see what is how the month is shaping up, they have a chance to make a decision and change what those outputs are or accelerate the good things that are going on. And that's where the ROI is at, the ability to make decisions in real time and have confidence in those numbers. And we hear that from CFOs over and over again in our projects. So what this really leads us to is this virtuous cycle that we see often in our projects where um, the first part of this is just being responsive. So having the, your data and your process together so that in, a, in near real time, you're really seeing how things are going and how they kind of shape up to the plan of what is um, expected or been planned for anyway. When you can be that responsive with data, what we find is that people can then be adaptable, meaning they can decide aha, here's what's happening. Let me adapt to that situation and take advantage of it. When that adapt, adaptability comes into the organization, now people are be, uh, becoming more collaborative, seeing where they can work together to adapt because they have better insights to what's going on with the business. So when you have that collaboration going on, people become empowered. When they're empowered, then they feel like they're in control and they're really engaged in the organization. So there's a lot of um, business benefits to really having you know, good information in an automated way that increases the cycle time at this, or the cycles, but reduces the cycle time so that you can see information in a much more timely way. So it really brings us to um, our conclusion here is that, you know, if you have processes where you're pulling data into spreadsheets or spending some significant amount of time preparing data so that you can have insights, um, or if your insights are really focused on a kind of a month to month or quarter to quarter basis, then there's really advantages here to um, doing some you know, implementing some process automation and getting information to your um, to your business users on a much more frequent basis um, within the period. And so what you'll find is that it's just easier to access and prepare your data. Um, not only that, but it just empowers more people. So, you know, often when you're working through and preparing data and then when you get to distributing it, then people have to consume that. And if it's on a kind of a, a monthly basis, then, you know, it's again, it's a reorienting and then seeing, okay, now what happened, you know, earlier in the month. And so empowering, you know, more people to work with that information just drives deeper engagement within the organization. Yeah, and then there's, of course, the efficiency side of this. If you're not spending all this time just munging your data, you have time to kind of think about what the results mean. Overall, kind of putting all of these together, that last bullet there is, it's really an accumulation of benefits. Um, rarely do we see that there's just like one really huge benefit and that is, you know, that said, yes, there are some big benefits. However, when you start to accumulate all the benefits of doing this, there's really serious ROI that happens. And so, you know, this is what we're seeing kind of across our e-commerce clients is multiple different systems, a lot of data coming in in volume, some integration going on, but more um, data processing needed to get into real insights to support that decision-making. And this is where process automation has been a great help. 
So hopefully that has provided you some insights as to, you know, what does this technical term means, this analytic process automation, and what's the business value behind it? It really is all about driving insights in a timely way and getting your place where, getting you to a place where you're really taking advantage of that information um, before it kind of gets beyond its shelf life. So thank you so much for your time. I uh, would love to talk with you if you have any questions and just start a conversation. All right. Thank you so much, Lauren and Alyssa, for a great presentation today. Uh, if you had questions coming through for our presenters, we'll be following up with you after the webcast. And here's a link to an online survey where you can provide feedback for today's presentation. Please take a moment to complete this survey as your feedback is very important to us. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you'll join us again next time.